What's up everybody, Derek Anderson, the DA, and this is my review of episode two of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. Now, you'll remember my first uh, review, I said that I had a friend that had seen the first four episodes, and he said, trust me, it doesn't get better after episode one. Episode one is literally the best episode. And I told him after I watched it, I said, man, you can't be serious about that. He says, no, bro, I'm very, very serious about that. And here we get to episode two. Yeah, he wasn't lying, man. It is just getting worse and worse all the time, like Lando's deal. This is getting really, really bad. Let's think about this. Uh, episode two had lots of Easter eggs, okay? Uh, episode two had lots of reveals and teasers. Um, we got to meet some new characters, right? Uh, they let the plot and the storyline kind of unfold a little bit. We even got some like MCU references. So it's kind of like, okay, we're connecting this more and more to the MCU. But the one thing that we didn't get was any kind of damn comedy. Like, where's the comedy in this? Who's laughing at this stuff? Because I keep reading reviews and everybody's like, oh man, that was just slapping my knee. This stuff is so funny. And I'm like, when, where? These people are lying to me. I want to watch this show with all of these people that are claiming that this trash is funny. Because I want to see the, I want to look right into their eyes as they're trying to make up laughter. Because you can always tell when people are fake laughing. I want to look into these people's faces when they're faking that laughter. Because this is not funny at all. Not so much at all. The only thing funny about it is how badly written this whole thing is. There is absolutely no comedy in this whatsoever. It's like, I feel like, I feel like Jeff Goldblum from Jurassic Park. You know, I'm knocking on the window and like, hey, you guys plan on having some uh, comedy in this comedy show eventually? Hello, you know, that's what I'm doing right now because this thing is just terrible, trash, garbage, basura. I can't understand it. And the worst part about it is this plot line that's developing, right? So in episode one, you know, they kind of developed this character as this strong woman that don't need no man. I can do it all by myself. I've been doing it this long. You got to respect me. You know, I'm a woman. You got to respect me. Okay. And then by the time we get to episode two, she's like this whiny brat that can't handle like a little adversity of losing a job. And now she's sitting there crying on the couch. You know, it's like, what happened to the strong woman that was in episode one, right? What happened to that? And then the job loss whole thing, like that whole job loss was just completely plot driven, okay? Completely plot driven. Cause you think about like the storyline, well, she loses her job because she turned into She-Hulk and you know, now, you know, going forward, that's gonna bias all kinds of juries. It's already gotten this case thrown out because they lost the case because, hey, you turned into She-Hulk, you saved everybody, now the jury is biased. This is gonna bias all future juries going forward, so you're fired. And I'm like, that don't even make sense. Like, why would you fire a good lawyer? You know, it's like, okay, you know what? There's a lot of things we could do with you. You know, we could have you working in the back, you know? We'll put you on like research, you know? You'll help other lawyers do their research. You'll even type up words and papers for them because hey, you wrote that last little war, that little winning speech, that very end of that case, you wrote that and that was gonna beat this other team. So hey, yeah, let's go ahead and just get you on staff and let's keep that going. You'll just be behind the scenes at this point. That's all they needed to do. They use that as the way to kind of segue her into her new job. Now, a better way of writing that would have been like, hey, she won the case. The other boss comes in and says, oh, you know what? You beat us, right? The old white guy that hires her eventually comes in and says, hey, you know what? You beat us. You know, you're actually a really good lawyer. I need you on my team, right? You know, here, here goes an offer that you can't refuse, you know? And then when you do that, you know what you're doing? You're like kind of setting this character up, giving her more authority over her own life, giving her some more agency, okay? She actually can make decisions. She's not left without anything to do. You know, like everything is happening to her and she's just reacting versus her taking action herself. You know, should I take this job? Should I not take this job? That opens her character up, makes her a little bit more interesting right now we're just looking at some whiny loud mouth like instead of making her character more interesting they actually devalued the character in reality all of that tough talk that you was telling us last week was just a whole bunch of bs you know what i'm saying like you're weak and you're whiny and you're annoying that's really what your character is all right got it so anyway she takes the job right and then she starts complaining about the job through the fourth wall and let me say this like her fourth wall is not funny whatsoever right like it's poorly done right you know there's a way to write fourth wall where you're turning and you're talking to the audience you're really engaging with the person on the other end and you know i least honestly the goal in any kind of fourth wall breaking is to be more interesting and more amusing at the very least especially in a comedy right especially in a comedy like deadpool did it perfectly right 
Deadpool is cracking jokes with the people in the audience, right? He understands, he's making jokes, he's making references that actually apply in the real world. This chick is just whining to the camera. She's literally using the fourth wall to bitch moan and complain about her life. And this is in a comedy of all things. Like, how did this get past Kevin Feige? That's what I wanna know. How did Kevin Feige look at this and approve this? Give it his little stamp of approval. What the hell is going on over there in Marvel? It honestly, honestly, it makes me think like, yeah, Kevin Feige must have something going on with one of these female writers. <laughs> He gotta be talking to one of these chicks. Hey, baby, don't worry. We're gonna get your show out there. Don't but don't pay no mind. All the little critics are review bombing it. Don't worry about it. We're gonna make sure that your show gets on. I mean, don't be surprised if you hear some kind of rumor that like Kevin Feige was getting it on with one of the female writers in She-Hulk. Because I, I, I honestly, it would make it all make sense at that point, right? It would make all of this nonsense that we watch and make total sense. And then we move on with her having Abomination as the client, right? So she works for this new company and they're saying, hey, you're gonna be representing superheroes let's go out here your first job is to take on a, the, the abomination uh emil blonsky as a client now i thought like when i first heard this i'm like okay this could get a little interesting right because you're talking about hey this guy and your cousin bruce banner once had a big major fight and you know both of these guys was going at it but blonsky tried to kill your brother which they actually reference in the you know show correctly there's a possibility that this could get very very interesting in terms of character development plot development now you're working with a conflict of interest now you're working out some different character motivations you know this could get into some deeper character development you know there's things that you can do with this okay you no know, now you can start showing maybe a few of her flaws you know they say she's not perfect okay she's got some flaws because maybe she's talking to bruce and bruce is like you know i don't really know about this i don't know how i feel about you taking on this guy as a client and trying to get him released from prison hey bruce this is like really important to me why don't you support me you know this guy says he's redeemed himself he's changed his mind or whatever and then bruce you know at the very end takes off on the spaceship and now she has to kind of wrestle with this on her own and you know yeah you start to see maybe some of the flaws that she has to work out it, by the end of the show maybe she takes on the case and says whatever with bruce i'm gonna go ahead and take this case on i believe him and now you're dealing with some of the character flaws of her that would have been very very interesting nope nope they wiped all of that out in about five minutes bruce is like oh he's such a nice guy he's been writing me letters you know we made up and stuff you know haha <laughs> good buddy yeah we good like yeah man come on you guys could have did something with that but instead you just let it drop and then the, like even the scene itself was purposeless like it was a dud like what was the point of that scene right just for him to drop like his little hint because he drops a little hint you know when people are kind of saying the seven soulmates like oh yeah that's the thunderbolts that's going to be the thunderbolts like okay maybe that is it whatever it is but at the end of the day like you know what was the point of that scene to say hey i write haikus <laughs> like is that the entire point you know you could have kind of did something stronger in that scene to kind of bring out more of the character of jennifer walter she hulk whatever but instead you absolutely did nothing you know it's just pointless like a lot of this stuff just feels pointless it feels drab it feels dull like the only thing again that i could say is at least it's 20 minutes long and it's not taking too much of your time but i think the biggest sin is the character of jennifer walters or Self and how they are treating this character. They're taking like what I would consider one of the more popular female superheroes out there in comics period, She-Hulk, right? Like she's very popular and she's likable. That's one of the things about She-Hulk is She-Hulk is awesome. She's a likable character. Most people enjoy She-Hulk. She's been in the Fantastic Four as well. I mean, she's a very well-known character. And this particular character that we're looking right here is just completely unlikable, unfunny, poorly written i just i just don't understand like the decisions that were made to do this like that scene right there where she's walking past the little boardroom and man i bet none of these men had to deal with this on their first day of work like you don't know what these dudes have dealt with on their first day of work why even make that stupid ass comment like that kind of stuff makes her completely unlikable whiny annoying that's what they're doing with this character and it's pathetic and then the cgi man like the cgi on this is completely horrible look at this this is trash man like Thanos was done better at four years ago or whatever. What's happened in the last four years to Marvel CGI efforts? This is not good at all. Because, like, straight up, I'm getting, like, Roger Rabbit vibes, like, watching this stuff. Like, who framed Roger Rabbit? And that was like, okay, these are actual cartoons in a human world, but this woman is supposed to be, like, a living human being in this world and she looks absolutely dreadful. Like, somebody just stapled her into this thing. I mean, it's just so obvious how she moves, her movement, 
her lip moving, her talking, everything. It is just bad, bad, bad CGI. And like I said, Thanos, like years ago, looked better than this. I don't understand what's going on over there. I mean, ultimately, this show, I think, is trying to, like, paint this picture of what it's like to be a woman in society. Uh, but the problem is they're doing it through the lens of this, like, whiny, self-important brat with few redeeming qualities like there's literally nothing i think is good about this person so far i don't find anything enjoyable about her character at all like the characterization of she-hulk has just been torpedoed and you know somebody at marvel should be like hey chicks hey let's get y'all some writing skills let's get you to writing classes you know let's go over some of john truby's original works you know let's start talking about how we can write characters a lot better than what we're doing here we just need to go back to like original basics of you know writing you know save the cat you know like we got to go back to those books because this is just terrible you know i understand that marvel in phase four you know they tried to open the door to a lot of different voices women quote unquote people of color we're gonna do them a favor and slide them a lot of these projects and see how they do um um, yeah phase four has just been one horrific disaster after another i could I, I only see two things that were worth while at all in phase four me personally and that's spider-man no way home which isn't even made by marvel 100 percent and then you know dr strange but that's because sam raimi is my guy and i love sam raimi uh but outside of that i i have found no nothing in phase four that's even worth continuing with but we'll keep watching because we want to see how deep this rabbit hole goes how bad does this thing get nevertheless folks what did you think about she hulk episode 2 go ahead drop down leave me your thoughts and your opinions in the comments below and thanks for watching see you next time